Well, hi there, quilty friends. Welcome back to my sewing room. I'm happy to have you here today. And today, this is uh, the Sew Your Sash series, number 34. And we are doing the neighborhood block. Okay, this is my neighborhood block. And the neighborhood block is also a week 23. And the scrappiness is happiness quilt along. And let's look at the quilt in the book. You saw the quilt, and there it is folded right here. You saw the quilt on uh, my sewing room, on my design wall here. But I want to show you what it looks like in the book. So we can look at the size and all that stuff in the block. So it's on page 154. All right, so here is the block right here. It's 12 and a half inches tall and 14 and a half inches wide, unfinished. And then here's the picture of the quilt. And when we sew this into a quilt, you can see that I added green sashing underneath. And for the grass, I thought that was really kind of fun. It made it look like a neighborhood. And um, I just put 12 houses in here to make up my neighborhood. The quilt finishes at 60 wide by 72 tall and it's a really fun scrappy quilt and I finished it in denim. I'll show you that uh, more up close. There it is styled in my sewing room with my bench and so all right let's get to the block. Let's put this right here move some stuff out of the way. Maybe you can see that a little bit better. Okay, and then here I have one block cut. And I just took my scrappy bins and my strips and for this one I did the roof first, which is what I usually do. And then I just pulled colors from that. So I thought it'd be fun to do a pink house. I did yellow windows for this one. You can see I used low volume for the houses for all the windows. I use the same, we'll just do a peek of that, but I use the same low volume for the sashing in between the houses and the windows in the quilt. But I thought it'd be kind of fun to do yellow windows for this one. Kind of looks like the lights on. And then I picked a fabric for my strips, uh, for my three and a half strips. This also came for my three and a half strips for the door. And then I just grabbed a background. I, um, Grab this chimney fabric that kind of matched the door, kind of did that in the quilt as well, is I used different fabrics for the chimney and the door, but I used the same color. And so that's what I did for that, okay? And so what we're gonna do is just straight on start sewing this block. And it always helps for me to have a sample of the block to look at. Now, I already have one sewn, obviously, but if I didn't, I would just have my book here on the stand and following directions. But because I've sewn so many of these blocks, I think I'll be okay by just looking at this block. So when I do any of my picture blocks, let me turn on the turn on the machine, turn off this light on Miss Patsy so there's no glare. And what I usually do for my picture blocks, you know, I hope that you don't get a little bit too nervous about sewing blocks like this because they're not traditional. Sometimes they may look harder to put together, but my picture blocks really are not hard. I just start with the smallest sections and, you know, use the design board, which is very important. If you don't have a design board, you can purchase them in many quilt shops or you can make your own. I have a tutorial for those, but it's important to have a design board so that you know kind of what goes together. And it's just a process of elimination. I just start with the smallest pieces, do easy corner triangles until I'm starting, you know, to build this house together. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take the E and the L, which is right here, and I'm just going to join those on top. I'm going to be using a quarter inch seam allowance. I don't happen to use a scant. Uh, quarter inch. I use an exact quarter inch. I just feel like if I cut correctly and sew correctly, then I'm not going to have a problem. So this is my seam sew easy guide, and this is the quarter inch line. And so I'm just going to go ahead, and me and Miss Patsy are going to start this block for you. I'm going to 
build this neighborhood house. And so, I've got that small piece, and then I'm going to look and see, okay, for the door, it needs easy corner triangles, so I'm just going to grab that, and those are the eye right there. Now, my um, Sew Handy stickers that you see here, you can sew over them, and you can iron over them, and it's not going to be a problem. They don't leave any residue whatsoever. So I'm going to just cut these apart. And I'll set these over here for a second. Let me drive my truck somewhere else. Set those over there for a minute because I want to do a little bit of pressing on these kind of at the same time. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to work on my windows. So on these windows, you can see that I've got a square on the top and a rectangle on the top. So, oh, sorry, not a rectangle. They're all squares. That just looks like a rectangle because I don't have my quarter inch seam allowance there. So these uh, rectangles are tall. And so what I'm going to do is just add these two and a half inch squares on the top and the bottom. It really helps to have these pieces labeled, especially when it's a pitcher block, so that you know what goes to what. And of course, I label them according to the book. So whatever letter it calls for in the book, you know, then I label accordingly so that I know what I'm doing. Let me throw that over there. And I'm going to finish up by adding these sizes first before I go over and press. I'm still hoping for spring. I know I told you last week that I was hoping for spring, but we're still cold here in Utah and we still have lots of snow. So I hope it's getting to be spring where you guys live. <laughs> I know it's going to come. Okay. So I've got the two and a half inch squares on each end. I've got a few things over here that need to be pressed, but I'm going to quickly trim these easy corner triangles off by, you know, leaving about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now these right here, I'm not going to worry about pressing open. It's large enough. I'm going to probably press the rest of the block open just so I can show you the difference. See, you can just take that right off. Take that K right off. No residue at all. And I'm going to take these. Before I do that, I like to set the seams. And what I mean by set the seams, I just kind of like to press and iron over them and get those seams set together, like the top and the bottom. That's what I mean by setting the seams. It just makes the block lie flatter. So, you know, there's always two ways to press. You can press this open, or you can press towards the windows or towards the house or whatever. And I usually, you know, I always have arrows in the book to give you suggestions, but that's always just suggestions. And if you have followed me, you know that I normally like to press all of my seams open, especially if I'm doing a smaller block. But this one's a little bit larger, so I'll show you the back of this block that's here on my design board that's not pressed open. And then this one is, and then I'm going to show you the difference. Okay, maybe I should let that... Cool. Put another one on it. Okay, so let's go over here. And while those are cooling, let's see what we can do. I can't do anything yet to add the strips to the windows or anything to the door yet or anything to those because, you know, I've got those there. But guess what? I can add the easy corner triangles on the roof. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. That is, so the roof is J. These are A. These are just a three and a half inch. This is a three and a half by 14 and a half. 
These are three and a half inch squares. And all I'm gonna do with that is line this up correctly right here on the corners. I'm gonna start sewing right on this corner right here. And then this center line right here on my seam so easy guys, I'm gonna follow that corner right along that line. And I'm just using a regular stitch length, maybe a little bit shorter than maybe most people use. I don't like to use a really long stitch length. And especially when I'm pressing seams open, I do shorten my stitch a little bit. And then I just got used to shortening it. So now when you're doing easy corner triangles, you want to make sure that you're going to be sewing the correct way that you want it to slant. So I'm going to turn it this way and start on this corner. And then follow that line. Okay, easy peasy. I love doing easy corner triangles. I don't have to cut triangles and cut this at an angle and then try to get them straight. That, that is the old fashioned way the way my grandma used to have to do it. And my grandma was still alive, of course, when I started designing fabric, just at the very beginning. But when rotary cutting and everything was was a, a thing, she just thought that was a great invention. She's like, I wish I had that in my day. And she didn't have to use all the cardboard templates. Okay, so let's just stack these up here. These are nice and cool and nice and flat those over there for the next step. Now this I'm not going to press open. I don't really feel the need for that. And I'm just going to make sure that this is completely open all the way right here. I don't want any little pleats going on along. Sometimes I'll use my fingers just to fill it. And then same thing here after setting the seams. I just don't want to work it too much because even though it's already sewn and this seam is safe, this is still on the bias and I just don't want to stretch it out. Okay, I'm going to let that cool and then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to take these two chimneys right here and I'm going to put the C in the middle, okay? Wait for that half for a minute. On, let's see how I'm going to do this. There's several ways I could do this. I could take the windows and put these strips on each side of the window, and I think that's what I'm going to do. So, or I could have put one strip on each side of the door, but we need to add a piece to the door first. So, what I'm going to do is just. chain piece these even though it's only one block I still call it chain piecing when I'm feeding the fabric through one piece after another let's grab that put these strips here it's pretty quiet right now Reed's taking a nap We'll see how long that lasts, huh? Okay. Now, now that I've got this on the end of my chain, I'm going to go ahead, open it up, and stitch the other side. one and a half by seven and a half inch strips on the other side and of course all these measurements are in the book you know for cutting make sure it's lined up here again you can pin if you'd like I just don't happen to be a pinner unless I really feel it's necessary or needed 
put that over there so that I can press that in the next segment. Okay. All right, now we've got one last thing to add this piece H to the top of the door, which is this piece right here. Okay, I'm gonna run this scrap of fabric through. We're gonna go over and press. And this is nice and flat. So this is three and a half by 14 and a half at this point. I'm gonna put this back over here on the design board. I'm gonna go ahead and set all these seams. That one's a little bit tricky to set because it doesn't unfold flat. Now these I'm gonna press open. And this is, let me grab my seam roller. I really like to use the seam roller first, when, especially when I've got other seams like this. And that's simply to make sure that it is open all the way. This little seam roller comes in handy too when you don't have an iron, like maybe if you're on a retreat and you have to share irons, sometimes it's nice, you know, just to use the seam roller. Okay, I wanna get that open all the way make sure there's no pleats in there and then I can just set the iron on top of it get it nice and hot and set that on top can't remember if I set those seams but it doesn't hurt to do it again and then this door I don't think I need that open so you can kind of see how I'm doing things some things open uh, pressing them open you know and sometimes not These I'm gonna go ahead and press open. I want these nice and flat. I'm gonna do that. Use that roller. And yes, I use my fingers a lot just to kind of feel. Nothing can really replace, you know, the own feel of your fingertips to see if that's open all the way. Heat it up good, and then I'm going to put a clapper right in the middle of it. Same thing over here. I hope all of you guys are having a good week and you're able to get some quilting in. I hope you're having a good time with this sew along that we're right in the middle of making a bunch of scrappy blocks out of our stash okay we're gonna let those set up there for a minute and um, I think that the one we pressed first this roof piece is cool enough that we can go ahead and we're gonna add a B piece see to the side of each one so I'm just going to go ahead and line those up. I always have little scraps of fabric, but they're ready to run underneath my presser foot in between little segments when I'm filming. When I don't, I'm still working on these blocks over here. See that I'm making little patchwork segments to do these. Did you see this in my opening video? This is made for me by um, Jan from Noodle and Lou. And this is my custom little Lori Holt quilty doll. Isn't she cute? She made her for me in 2018. 
little red shoes, striped socks. She's adorable. And she put my bloom quilt in there and my aqua sewing machine and my tomato pin cushion. One of my apple blocks. It's just so fun. I just love this. She's my little quilty companion. But in between scraps of fabric when I'm just sewing and not filming, then I'm making these blocks here for another quilt. And I will show you progress on that at another time. Okay, let's go over here. Let's see what we've got going here. We've got the door that we can lay right there. And we've got these two window pieces. And these, there's no upside down or right side up. So you can just, you know, lay those there on either side. But as you can see on one side, I'm gonna have to put this D background strip So because there's no right side or wrong side, I can just add this background strip to either side that I want. So these houses are super easy, fast, and fun to put together. It's just, like I say, a process of elimination, just sewing segments until they get, each segment gets smaller, or not smaller, larger and larger until you've just got the segments that you just have left to sew together. And so blocks, you know, my picture blocks, I named them my picture blocks years and years ago because they're not traditional, you know, kind of like pieced quilting blocks. And so I just called them my picture blocks in my first book, Quilty Fun. And I've just stuck with that. And, um... Sometimes they're intimidating. Sometimes they have a lot of pieces. Sometimes they don't. But I don't think they look intim. I think they look intimidating to some people, but I don't think they're very intimidating at all to sew. And uh, set these seams. And again, you, it's just a process of elimination. You just start with the smaller pieces like this, and just do them into sections. Like this is the top of the roof section with the chimneys and now, you know, it'll be a strip and ready to go into the quilt. Oh, I don't know why I keep rolling that one open right there. Okay, we've got that there. And then I left that one over there on accident. I'm gonna press this open real quick. this open real quick and then we're gonna put a clapper on them I might put one on that side as well might as well just to get it even flatter if it's got a lay here with a clapper on it I've got plenty to add to the other side We'll let those sit there for just a minute. And let's see. Let's pull this over here. So what I'm trying to do is get this section right here. Okay, ready to go. And you can see that I can sew those two together. And then I've got the door right here. And now let's look at these over here. This one can go on this side. This one can go on this side. I'll take that sticker off. And then I can just sew this whole row together and then sew these together and then sew the whole thing together. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now and I'll be right back. Okay, friends, we're back and the baby's fed and this block is sewn together. And I'm loving the way it looks. Right now it is 12 and a half inches tall by 14 and a half inches wide. And you know, I always show you how I'm trimming up or that I trim up with my trim it ruler. So this is a rectangle block and obviously my trim it rulers are square. So I just kind of wanted to show you how I do that. Because it's 12 and a half inches tall, that's what I put on for height-wise, right? 
to trim it up. And I can just go across there. And then I'll take my 14 and a half trimmer ruler. I pretty much have these in all inch increments, you know. And then I can put that on there widthwise, okay? And, you know, trim everything up and center everything up. And um, you can see that the blue, the aqua, around here is the quarter inch. And you can see what that block is going to look like when you finish it. No points cut off on the sides. And so that's awesome. So I just kind of wanted to show you how, or really didn't demonstrate, but I just talked about how you trim up a rectangle block with my trim it rulers. You just use both sizes. Okay, let's take a look at this block. This is kind of half of it. Most of it is open. Um, some of it is not. This right here, I decided because of this, I could have pressed it open, but I was like, why not? Just do that towards the roof. And then this one was pressed towards that. All of the other seams are open. And I really like how that's nice and flat. You can see I was using this piece of fabric for something else because I drew on the back. But then I decided not to and put it back in my scrap bin because I don't like to waste anything. So I put it back in my scrap bin, bin and look now, it's in a block. All right, so then we've got a cute little pink house here. My grandma had a pink house and Mr. Honey's grandma had a pink house. So I guess that was kind of a thing back then. But so I love the way that looks. The back of this one. Let me show you this. It's not pressed open. Okay, you can see that it's pressed like in the book, which is great too. But you can always see ridges in this one. See what I mean? It always looks like a pleat, even though it's not a pleat. It's just because of, you know, the, the many layers of fabric there. But it's still nice and flat. I just kind of like to show you. It's not quite as flat as the other one, but I like to show you the difference between those. And I just think those little houses are cute together. Now let's, let me move um, Miss Patsy over here so that I can pull this quilt in. And we can look a little bit up close and personal to this quilt. And so literally all I did when I was cutting for this quilt is I just used my scrap bins, okay? And I just, like I said, usually started with the roof and then I just kind of pulled colors from that. Uh, I used this, um, this print is from Farm Girl Vintage, this low volume, and I thought it was kind of fun to carry that throughout the quilt. And I just continued making scrappy houses and you can see that the green underneath, I could have used one green but because they were scrappy houses, I thought it was fun to use different greens for my different collections. This is uh, from a really old collection. I believe it's like my third collection, third or fourth. I can't even remember. But this was from my Gracie Girl collection. Cass, do you remember that? Cass and I did. Cassidy's middle name is Grace. I used to call her Gracie Girl, so that's why my collection was called Gracie Girl. And we did a little collection together, and that was fun. And so let's kind of show you the other side. These houses are upside down. And then what I ended up doing was just making sure I had different colors of houses and things like that. And I didn't worry about different colors of roofs. You can see that these are together in pretty much the same color. And then I decided to do a denim border. This is from Prim. And this is from Flea Market. This is one of my prints from Flea Market. And then when I was deciding on a backing, um, oh, let's talk about the cornerstones. I just decided yellow for that because I had green grass and, you know, all different colored houses. I decided to go ahead and do a red binding and yellow cornerstones. And then because of the green grass, I picked this wide back. Okay. I have this wide back in three colors. I believe it's, there's a yellow ground. No, there's a pink ground, an aqua ground, and a green ground. Okay, and that's from my Vintage Happy 2, I believe, wide backs. And so I did use the same background throughout, which is my B cross stitch right here. I believe it's in Butterscotch or Daisy. I can't remember which one, but that's what that looks like there. And so it's scrappy, but it's kind of when I put it together, it's kind of planned scrappy, meaning this is all the same fabric. 
and this you know border was the same instead of scrappy and things like that so the houses themselves all came from my scrap bins and the grass came from my scrap bins and then I just pulled yardage for these and so I hope you have fun making your neighborhood houses I love house quilts love love house quilts I've made so many of them designed so many of them as far as I'm concerned you can use them year-round for everything and um so I hope you like house quilts as much as I do. I hope you have fun making these two blocks. And then next week, I'll be doing another Sawyer stash with some fun little things. And let's see, where were we? We're not that far yet. I believe it's my flag quilt that's next. Yeah, it's my patchwork flag quilt. It's next right here, and uh, I'll be showing you how I make these stars, and I'm going to do some fun things with these stars, some different things to show you as well. So, join me next week, and I hope you have a great week. Hope spring comes during the week. We'll see, and I'll chat with you later.